Having discussed about the French political setup during the old regime, we shall now talk about the French economy as it was during the old regime. So, let us now begin this very interesting discussion on French economy. Now, during the old regime and through the medieval period, the kingdom of France was embroiled in several wars with different kingdoms and monarchies. Now, you can understand that wars caused a lot to the treasury, to the resources, to the wealth of any nation, of any empire, of any kingdom. And this is something that had happened through the medieval period to the kingdom of France. Now, when King Louis XVI came to power in the year 1774, he saw that the French treasury was severely drained. It was under severe strain because these wars had costed a lot. To fight these wars, the French kingdom had spent a lot of resources and wealth. And it is for this reason that when Louis XVI ascended the throne, he found the French treasury almost empty, which in turn affected the French economy. Now, this involvement in several wars is one of the many reasons that contributed to the depletion of the French economy just before the outbreak of the French Revolution. But the involvement in wars through the medieval period was one of the many reasons that contributed to the depletion of the French treasury. A very important factor that severely strained the French treasury was the lavish and extravagant lifestyle of the French monarch that was King Louis XVI. Now, Louis XVI was known for his extravagant and exorbitant lifestyle. He spent a huge amount of resources and wealth to fund this lavish lifestyle. And he was not the only member of the royal family to spend a lot on the extravagance and lavishness of their lives because his wife Mary Antoinette was even more lavish. But King Louis XVI was not the only royal member who gave himself up to this extravagant and lavish lifestyle because his wife Mary Antoinette spent an even more extravagant life because they spend a lot of resources to finance their lavish life. In fact, the lives of King Louis XVI and Mary Antoinette have often been referred to as a life of party by several historians. Now, King Louis XVI expanded his estate in Versailles and gave it the shape of the magnificent Palace of Versailles. And here you can see the opulence and grandeur of the Palace of Versailles. This is inside a chamber in this huge and magnificent palace. Just by seeing this interior, you can understand how much money and resources these people as in King Louis XVI and Mary Antoinette required to maintain such a lavish lifestyle. But I am sure you are questioning from where did they get all the money and resources to fund their lavish lives? Well, most definitely it came from the French treasury. Now, the French treasury or the treasury of any country is something to which the people of the nation or the country or the empire contribute. And here was this extravagant monarch who spent all the resources and all the wealth of the treasury in order to fund his own extravagant and exorbitant lifestyle. Now, there were many reasons that put the French economy under severe strain. A very important among those would be French involvement in the American War of Independence. Now, bitterness and conflict between Britain and France is not something new in the pages of history. It has been prevalent since the ancient and medieval times. And when 
Britain and France were establishing their colonies in America, they were fighting between themselves in order to gain global recognition, in order to gain global importance, in order to assert their importance in not just Europe but in a different continent that was America. Now in the Seven Years War, France was defeated by Britain and it came at the cost of a great humiliation for France because France had to surrender all the colonies it had established in America. Now France took this defeat and this humiliation very personally, which is why France now started helping the American colonists, the indigenous people of America in their fight against British colonial rule. The American War of Independence lasted from 1775 to 1783 in which the American colonists and the indigenous people of America were fighting to gain their independence, to gain their freedom from British colonial rule. While the help that was extended to the colonists by France in the form of arms and ammunition, weapons, soldiers and supplies helped the colonists in order to gain their independence from British colonial rule, it costed France a lot. France thought that it would be able to gain power over America once the colonists defeat the British colonial rule. But France was wrong to assume so because France did not get a lot of territorial holdings in America following the American War of Independence. So France was now on the losing side. Firstly, it was the Seven Years War in which Britain had defeated France and it brought a crushing humiliation to France. And then French involvement in the American War of Independence did not also prove very fruitful, which is why France was now shoved into severe financial crisis. France lost a lot of resources and wealth in the process of helping the colonists and this help did not bring a lot to the French kingdom. So this was another reason that contributed to the draining of the French economy. Now let me ask you a question before proceeding with this lesson any further. Involvement in which of these wars put severe strain on the French economy? Was it the American Civil War, the American War of Independence or the Bolshevik Revolution or the First World War? Well, the correct answer is the American War of Independence. France had supported the American colonists by extending help in the form of resources, wealth, supplies and soldiers in order to defeat British colonial rule in America. But unfortunately, the French kingdom did not emerge victorious out of this involvement. Now during the old regime, we have been talking about how many reasons contributed to the depletion and the draining of the French treasury. Now France was already knee deep in debts because it had accrued a high debt of 2 billion lives. Lives was the French currency till the outbreak of the French Revolution in 1789. Now added to such a high amount of debt, France's involvement in the American War of Independence also costed it a lot. One more billion lives was now added to this existing debt. Now France had already borrowed several loans in order to help its economy recuperate. But this added debt costed France a lot. It was no longer able to pay back the debts. And those people who had extended loans to France were now starting to charge huge amounts of interest. So France was now not just knee deep but neck deep in debts. It was impossible for France to pay back all the loans with the added interests. And moreover France was now plunging headlong into more and more loans and debts. So these are some of the many reasons that contributed to the depletion of the French treasury just before the outbreak of the French Revolution. 
I'm sure you have seen your parents paying taxes to the government for the money that they earn every month. Now you will also have to pay taxes to the state when you start earning money on your own. Now taxes are paid to the state or the country for the welfare of the nation as well as for our own welfare and well-being. Now taxes are something that constitute a very important source of income for any state, for any nation, for any kingdom. And this process of paying taxes to contribute to the economy and treasury was prevalent even in the French kingdom during the old regime. But I'm sure you are questioning who were the ones who paid taxes in the French society. I'm sure you still remember that the French society during the old regime was divided into the three estates and beyond which sat the French monarch. So it goes without saying that members of all the three estates were the ones who paid taxes to contribute to the French treasury. But you will be wrong if you assume that all the members of all the three estates paid taxes. This is because the burden of taxation fell only on the third estate. The first and the second estates were exempted from paying any taxes while the third estate members were the ones who had to pay all the taxes. Now the third estate comprised mainly the peasants, the workers, the artisans and they were mostly poor. Though the third estate comprised 98% of the French population, we have learnt that it were the peasants who comprised 90% of the third estate and the peasants were poor. So how were they able to pay the taxes? Instead, the first and the second estates were the ones who held resources, wealth and lands. The clergy was very resourceful and so was the royalty and nobility. So why didn't they pay taxes? Because had this system been fair, they should have been the ones to pay more taxes because they had and they possessed more amounts of wealth and resources. But sadly enough, this taxation system during the old regime in the French society wasn't very fair and equal and it were the third estate members who had to pay all the taxes. Now along with paying taxes, the third estate members were subject to different kinds of discriminations. This is because the first and the second estates were not just exempted from paying taxes but they also enjoyed the privilege to impose their own taxes. So the members of the third estates had to pay taxes to the state along with paying taxes to the members of the first and the second estates. So can you imagine how difficult it must have been for the poor peasants, for the poor workers and artisans to pay so many taxes. It is as if the maintenance of the French economy and treasury fell on their shoulders solely. And the members of the first and the second estates enjoyed many privileges, one of which was the imposition of their own taxes. Along with that, they could also run for higher offices and this is something that the members of the third estates could never do. And just on account of feudal privileges, they could also extort forced and unpaid labor from the peasants, from the workers, from the artisans who belonged to the third estate. So the third estate members were having to bear the burden of taking care of the French treasury and economy in all possible ways. Now we learned that the first and the second estates enjoyed the privilege to impose their own taxes. Now the clergy comprised the first estate and the clergy had a lot of power and authority in the French society during the old regime. It imposed certain taxes like the tithe which was a religious tax that all the members of the third estate were supposed to pay as well as the tail which was a direct land tax. 
So despite not possessing huge amounts of lands and resources, the members of the third states were having to pay taxes in the likes of these. And along with that, taxes were also imposed on commodities of regular consumption like sugar and tobacco. Now the members of the first and the second states knew very well how to extort as much as possible from the third state. Because sugar and tobacco are things that everyone required for their daily sustenance. And when these items and goods were taxed, it became increasingly difficult for the members of the third state to pay all these taxes. They were already poor. They were not earning as much as the first and the second state members. So, you can understand how unfair and unequal the taxation system was in the French society during the old regime. But do you think the members of the third states had the option of not paying the taxes? Most definitely not because they were treated with severe punishment if they did not pay taxes, if they were categorized as tax defaulters. They were imprisoned and after they were arrested, they were taken to the state prison which was the Bastille. Now this is an image of the Bastille prison. Now tax defaulters were considered criminals. Can you imagine how horrible it must have been? Because these members of the third state who were already reeling under the repercussions of poverty found it increasingly difficult to pay the taxes. And if they failed to pay the taxes, they were considered criminals. They were imprisoned in Bastille. Now in Bastille, any kind of opponent member or any person whom the French monarch did not like was also sent and imprisoned. Slowly over time, the Bastille grew as a symbol of oppression, as a symbol of injustice in the minds of the French masses. Now this Bastille prison played a very important and significant role behind the outbreak of the French Revolution and it also steered the course of the French Revolution. In our subsequent lesson, we will take into account another important aspect of the French economy as it was prevalent during the old regime and we will learn how it all paved the way towards the outbreak of the French Revolution. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.